um, rocking with Jam Man is with Dino from Fear Factory. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm over here in sunny California. Uh, you know, pretty much doing a press uh, for all for our new record, Aggression Continue. Congratulations on your new album, Aggression Continuum. Thanks. I appreciate it. I can't wait for it to come out uh, next month. Yeah, that has to be really big because, you know, pandemic and all. Finally. Well, it's very liberating to finally get it out because uh, we've been working on it for quite some time. Oh, so that's even better. I have to say, that album rocks, man. <laughs> that album is... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, we put a lot into it. Um, does it bring up different emotions for you when doing press for this album? Because it's the swan song for your, for you and Button and Virgin. Um, yeah, no, it's not the swan song for me. I'm going to continue moving forward. Um, yeah, he definitely left the band. Um, so it's definitely his swan song, of course, right? Yeah. But um, no. It, 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 it's, it doesn't bring up those kind of emotions that you're probably talking about. Um, it brings up more, you know, uh, happy emotions that I'm able to continue with the name Fear Factory and able to move forward. I know the lockdown affected a lot of people in different ways. It kept people locked up in their heads where their thoughts and caused it for a lot of breakup in relationships. relationships. Do you think that is what happened with you guys? Um, no, we went through a lot of legal, legal issues, uh, with, uh, ex band members that really, uh, financially and mentally drained everybody. Um, so I, I really don't know exactly why he decided to, uh, leave, but, uh, other than what he said in the, in the media, but I, I don't really know. He, that's a question that he would have to answer. Okay, sorry if I brought up that in memories. It just, you know. No, 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 no. It's all good. I've been answering, trust me, I've been answering these questions for a month now. <laughs> <laughs> I know you recently put out the single for uh, Fuel Injected. Yep. Suicide Machine. I love that track, man. It really got me. Boom! Yeah, it's one of those type of songs that's just a ripper. You know, and um, it's based off a character from a movie that we really like called Mad Max. And the character is called the Knight Rider. And the Knight Rider had this hot rod car and he was just like running over people and just going crazy. But once he found out that Mad Max was coming to get him, uh, you know, he ended up dying in the movie, of course. And uh, so we just based the song uh, off of him. And that's why the song was all ripping and fast because the car was ripping and fast. I have to ask, why was the video pulled? The video pulled from what? YouTube. Uh, the, we never had a video for it for you for fuel injected to my side machine. We only had a visualizer, as we call it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, so, cool. but we did have a video called Recode. I'm sorry, a video that we have for a song called Disruptor that is age restricted because it has a lot of violence in it guns and guys getting blasted in the head so that is hard to watch you know you can't it's hard to access to watch we we'll also have another single coming out on june 11th called recode and that's going to have the continuation from uh the first video disruptor so it's going to be part two uh, going forward, do you feel like he, you will have more control in the band going forward? Um, I already have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, because of the trademark, it allows me to do all the make all the decisions for the band and move forward with it for sure. Um, but you know, I've always handled all the music process, the recording process, the production process. You know, and contacting artists and getting things done in that way. So that's not really going to change, <clears throat> but uh, you know, definitely having the trademark is definitely allowed me to make uh, decisions on my own. 
I think it's great you're carrying on. I mean, look at ACDC, Killswitch, Engage, Subline, and Foreigner, just to name a few who kept rocking on new singles. Yeah, well, I have no plans on stopping just because uh, one person doesn't want to be in the band. You know, I definitely want to continue forward. And uh, yeah, all those other bands had some amazing singers that came in and replaced the original ones, you know, for various reasons, you know, whether somebody quitting or somebody passing away. But in my case, you know, the the person quit and so i'm going to move forward with a new singer um we're in the process of looking for one right now and we've uh, narrowed it down to a handful of, of people so you know due to covid restrictions we haven't really been able to get into a room and jam with each other yet sorry about my hiccup oh no <laughs> oh my god that's the worst the hiccup yeah when you're doing an interview i know it's okay it's i don't okay. care I'm, I'm human you know, we're not perfect. Yeah, you're not perfect. Nobody is, you know? Nobody is. Now, does it bother you that whenever you are doing to promote music these days, you have some kind of new new stories to go with it? Well, definitely there's a lot of drama surrounding this record. Yeah. You know, just getting it out and having to go through all the legal process of, uh, you know, fighting for the name and... Um, or just trying to trying to re, retain control of it um, was definitely a, a big story that was surrounding this record for sure. Um, but uh, I'm able to th things worked out, and uh, here we are today. And I can't wait for June 18th for everyone to hear the record. Like what I mean, if you are getting press in a lot of different publications, the headline is not going to be Dino talk talks about great. Uh, Ex oh my God. Um, aggregation continuum, but it will be about some kind of uh, gossip that was talked about in the. That's in, in yeah. The, yeah. That's just pretty much where the media has gone. You know what I mean? It's like they like to report other stories. You know what I mean? Uh, than the actual stories about the record, but it's okay as long as they still you know, advertise the album, I'm okay with that. Um, because it is things that I say. So if they want to, you know, use uh, something that I said as a clickbait, it's it's a nece necessary evil in a way, you know what I mean? Because you need these metal sites, you know, to help promote the band and help promote the album. And these metal sites need you because you're the ones who have the interesting story. Or how fast they can turn on you regardless of uh, how many hit records you have or rewards you won or countless hours you made the fans happy with your music, it takes one bit of controversy for them to turn on you and forget about all the good you and and the work you did. I mean, look at what they did to Mar my boy Marilyn Manson and David Ellison. Really I, I agree. I mean, cancel culture is very, very... Uh, strong these days and, and it sucks that you know you're you're guilty until proven innocent right but like i said earlier it's a necessary evil it's there anybody who's in the entertainment industry know that this is going to happen to them if you, you're going to have to have thick skin in this business um and you can't just worry about what they're going to say you just gotta like uh be motivated just to move forward and move ahead and not, not worry about it. Just let it roll off your shoulder and move on. I cannot believe Elson is no longer in Megadeth. I don't think that is fair at all. I don't think that's fair at all. Well, we don't really know what his relationship is with Dave Mustaine. I know that there's been a lot of uh, water under the bridge uh, with those guys. I know they've had some you know turmoil issues that were going on. So... Who knows? Who really knows? You know, I don't I, I don't know. I, I mean, if it's just based on what happened, then I would say it's unfair. But I'm sure there's stuff behind the scenes that we don't know that's going on that, you know, probably, you know, as Dave stated in his in, in the press release, he said it was a strained relationship. So obviously some stuff was going on behind the scenes that we just don't know about. The crazy thing is people like Kim Kardashian, Tommy Lee and Pamela, uh, 
Anderson did a lot of worse stuff and they made millions of dollars of it and became super famous. Yeah, but you know, Tommy Lee also went to jail. You know, he beat he beat up Pamela Anderson. He was in prison. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know, <clears throat> Motley Crue comes from a different era. You know, uh, we're in the we're in a whole different you know new era now with the, with the cancel culture and everybody's just willing to ready just to to destroy you and destroy your career. You know, without even like you know giving anybody a second chance or without even actually finding out the truth. So it's unfortunate that's where we're at th these days. Now I have to ask, what are your thoughts on Ripper Machine Gun Kelly winning the best rock album last night at the Billboard Rewards? He also won the hottest chick too. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, good, good for him. You know, at least he's keeping rock in the, out there in the, um, you know, exposing rock to, you know, bigger fans and more people. And hopefully that'll open the doors for one of the bands uh, like us. Um, I know recently talked about a possible world tour with Static X. Do you have a singer locked down for that tour? No, that's something that uh, we are still working on. Uh, I will be, as soon as this COVID restrictions are opened up, I will be able to get a singer down into LA and, Start working with him. Okay. I was thinking about going the Judas Priest route and get a singer from a cover band like in a movie rock star. Yeah, I actually uh, searched uh, YouTube for Fear Factory cover bands, but I wasn't able to find one that would I would see that would be able to fit. Ah, oh, dang, that has to be hard because you're trying to find a good singer, you know? So. Well, there's a lot of good talent out there, and there's a lot of good singers out there, and I found quite a few, and uh, I'm very excited. Oh, yeah, that has to be really great. Do you have any well-known singers hit you up and try to get the drop? Um, I had a couple here and there, yeah, but, you know, nothing that nobody ever really wanted to put on blast out there. <laughs> Do you think the new singer will help the band evolve or will you try to keep that classic fear factor sound? Well, whoever we choose <clears throat> has to respect what we did, you know, in our 30 year career for the past 10 records. So they're going to have to best represent those uh, records, you know, and keep it in its truest form. But I'm also excited to see where we go next, you know, because we'll be able to, the door's open so we can go wherever, you know what I mean? But we definitely want to keep the tradition of Fear Factory for sure. Either way, it will be a lot of pressure on that new singer with a new album possibly jumping into a world tour and taking over the world as the front man. Correct. There's going to be a lot of pressure on him. There's going to be a lot of press around it too. So, you know, whoever we choose is going to have to be able to be strong enough to handle all that. Yeah, because this that literally can actually affect somebody really mentally, very bad. For sure. Because for sure. Yeah, like I said, that has to be a ton of pressure with a new album, and then you're gonna also be jumping into a world tour possibly, and then also taking over the world as a frontman. That has to be really scary. Well, he or she is gonna have to be mentally prepared for that, and uh, I have a lot of experience in that field, so. Whoever it is, we can definitely, uh, you know, uh, get them, try to get them prepared for that as much as possible. Try to let them know that, look, <clears throat> you're going to be in the public eye. Now you're going to be, everybody's going to be watching you. Everybody's going to be judging you. You know, you're going to get a lot of attacks online. You know, you got to be able to handle all that. So. Yeah. Now Saliva recently added their replacement singer record. The I'm sorry, say, say it again. Okay. Now Saliva recently had their replacement singer record, their uh, record. Um, their, uh, their classic hits would never be possibly without you and your new singer. Uh, I don't know anything about Saliva. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I don't know. Uh, now Saliva recently added their replacement singer. Yeah. Okay, good. Good for them. I mean, I don't really know too much about the band, so I didn't even know they had a replacement singer. Oh. 
the question um uh so i know you had some crazy stuff happen to you recently did you ever find out who shot your car yes there was a guy uh about a half a block away we have a park um and in the park there's been a lot of you know due to covid there's been a lot of people a lot of homeless people and so some guy was just randomly shooting in the air and it just happened to land on my car it was nothing personal that had to be pretty scary at least that still had to be pretty scary well, yeah, of course, because you don't know who did it, you know, and then when the police come, they start asking you questions like, hey, do you have anybody that wants you dead? You know, that's a pretty tough question. Do you have any enemies? Yeah. And you're like, uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I know some of these enemies have guns. So it's like they got pretty scary there for a moment. Are you excited to get back, a bit, get back out on the road, road and tour? Are you definitely can't wait to get back out there and start playing again in, in front of all the fans and people who really enjoy your music and uh to go to all the different places and have some different food man i can't wait to get out there yeah definitely um <laughs> yeah, well i i i, I okay, sorry um do you think uh about how different it would be not only with safety protocol but a new singer in the band i'm sure you have your routines and we're used to certain things because you know it's going to be like a real new thing now yeah you know like your old schedule but it's going to be like a big reset well I'm, i know that when i get out there i'm going to be wearing gloves and a mask you know especially when i'm doing meet and greets because you just never know you know i'm sure covid's still going to be around there lingering around but i think that you know everybody's a lot of people are going to have to be vaccinated to be, start coming to some of these shows in certain states. You know, every state has different mandates and or, or different you know restrictions on how this is all going to work out. But that's why I'm waiting till next year to tour so I can, you know, hopefully all that will pass by then. Um, but what better way to get uh, get to know someone than being crammed through the tour bus for a few months? Yeah, I know. That's going to be, that's why I want to get these uh, new singers out here in California, you know, spend some time with them, maybe have them stay with me, see if I like them, you know, get them in a jam room, see how they see how they react with us. You know, it's all about the chemistry. What's your favorite memory from playing a show? From playing a show? Yeah. I have a lot of favorite memories, but one of my favorite memories is uh, playing with Metallica. We got to tour with Metallica in 2010, and that was a massive, massive shows. And just, you know, each show had like 50,000 people. And I remember in Japan, there was one show that had like 90,000 people. It's like, you know, it's insane uh, just going on stage and just seeing all those people. What is your worst? Oof. Uh, probably my worst one is when I had to crap on stage <laughs> and then uh my other worst one was when my shorts the the button broke and then they, they fell all the way down to my ankles so my my dingling was hanging out oh god, <laughs> oh my god. The imagine if children were there they have to be horrified for the rest of their life well we were opening up for ozzy so there was a lot of older people there i'm not sure if there was any kids there or not but there was a lot I'm of older just people seeing there. that so just <laughs> right down. Just <laughs> that thing. <laughs> but hey, listen, I got to go. Our time is up. Okay, just uh, let me ask you, how do your how do my followers follow you? I'm sorry, say it again? How do my followers follow you? Like, where is your website? So they can go there and like and subscribe there. And well, we have, uh, you know, if, if you want to buy, pre-order the album, vinyl, cassettes, CDs, um t-shirts uh tour dates go to fearfactory.com for all of that all right man thank you for being on my show i hope the next time we talk is at the factory at one of your shows dude peace <laughs> thank you man appreciate it you have a good one man peace you too bye